Nick Holdsworth reporting live from Berlin. Many thanks. We're going to cross now uh, to stay in the German capital. Armin Zorn is a member of uh, the uh, German parliament uh, from Olaf Scholz's SPD uh, party. Thank you for being with us here on France 24. Good evening, and thanks for having me. Uh, for you, this visit to, uh, first of all, to the state visit and the fact that he's giving this keynote address to, in Dresden, the French president, your thoughts on that? I mean, it's, it's quite important, and, and it proves that the French-German friendship is not just about exchange between the state, be between governments, right? It's more than that. It's a French president coming to Germany, going to Dresden, and talking directly to the people. And then you saw the pictures. Um, it looks like uh, people are actually happy to see President Macron. So the German-French uh, uh, friendship, it's more than just exchange between politics. It's, you know, something that is well felt between our citizens. It's something that you see in the field of culture, education, um, um, even the use and even the media. So I think uh, we can be very proud of that friendship and we will continue working on that. Now, uh, the lead candidate for your party for the upcoming European elections uh, was attacked by far-right supporters uh, earlier this month in Dresden. Uh, your thoughts on what that city stands for right now at this point in time? No, Dresden is a beautiful city. Dresden is really a beautiful city with a nice um, economy working on tech and working on climate change and working on um, green energy and so on and so forth. But unfortunately, you also have a couple of idiots. Let me put it that way. You have a couple of idiots and far-right people um, somehow um, uh, disturbing the whole, the whole mood, the whole vibe that you have in that city. And in these days, I think it's quite important that we make clear that the majority of the people, either in the eastern part in Germany or in the entire Federal Republic of Germany, they are actually in favor of an open society. They are in favor of having people from different backgrounds coming to Germany, living in Germany, um, um, applying to the rules and becoming part of the society. So we see we see some far-right movement in Germany as well as in other European uh, nations. But I would say that when you're looking at the entire society, I would say the majority of the people are in favor of a peaceful living together. And that's what we should focus on. What do you make of Emmanuel Macron uh, offering to debate Marine Le Pen in the run-up to these uh, European elections? Uh, Macron's party, which is in a dogfight for second place uh, with um, the socialists. I mean, it's not, it's not up to me to, to, to decide, you know, it's not up to me to judge about that. But I would say that what we're seeing in Germany, it's quite important that we make clear that far-right parties do not have any solutions. When it comes to uh, our future, when it comes to economic growth, when it comes to fighting social inequality, when it comes to fighting climate change, what we see in Germany is that the AFD, the far right party in Germany, they do not have any solutions. So that's what we've been working on lately, making sure that this so-called patriotic alliance for, for, for Germany, they are not patriotic at all. They don't have any political platform. And then on top of that, they have close links to Russia and to, and to China. So I think we need to get to engage more and more in that debate and make sure that we actually show their real faith. And at the end of the day, they are not making the, the life of the people better. So there are elections in 27 nations throughout the EU. There's also jockeying for uh, who will head the next European Commission. Currently, it's uh, the German Christian Democrat Ursula von der Leyen, who's president of the commission. And she's made overtures to Giorgio Maloney and uh, to, the, to, their, to their likes. Uh, so that uh, there could be some kind of opening so that she retains her job. Your thoughts on that? I mean, that's very disappointing. Apparently, Ursula von der Leyen is only interested in keeping her job. But for us social democrats, for us socialists and social democrats in Europe, it's clear that we only can work with people who have the best interests uh, of Europe in mind. And it's impossible, it's not, it's unthinkable that you work with far right uh, 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 powers in Europe, within the European Union that are trying to destroy the very European Union. So that move is quite surprising. And I expect that von der Leyen should clarify and make sure and, and make clear that she's staying for a progressive, open and, and, and democratic European Union. Here in France, the focus has uh, been a lot on the match between Macron's party and the far right. Of course, Europe-wide, um, the socialists are the second biggest force in the outgoing European Parliament. Uh, is it a national election that's being run campaign like it is here in France right now? 
I mean, look, you know, European elections are always some, somehow a mix of European topics and then uh, also national topics, uh, unfortunately, I would like to say. So in Germany, I see certain trends towards talking more and more, more and more about uh, European solutions. And also, when you're looking at the challenges we're currently facing, I think more and more people are realizing that we need European solutions. But on the other hand as well, um, I cannot deny the fact that uh, from time to time you have voters, you have people asking more questions about the, the national level. So I would say it's a, it's a mix of both. But looking back um, and comparing this campaign to former to, to previous campaigns that, that we witnessed, I would say we're getting more and more in that situation where we're talking about European topics, where we're talking about the European project, and more and more comparing the different um, opportunity, the different. Um, um, uh, campaign platforms with, with each other. As a member of the SPD, what would you like to hear Olaf Scholz tell Emmanuel Macron when the two sit down on Tuesday? Look, I would say I would tend to defer uh, when it comes to to, uh, to analyzing the, the current state of the German-French uh, friendship. I would say the most important things when it comes to that is that we share the same values. We do share the same values and the, the same objectives. There are certainly some difference when it comes to the strategy and when it comes to the method that we need and the approaches that we need in order to get there. But at the end of the day, I would say we do have the same values and the same objectives. And I don't know, you know, when it comes to a friendship, I think the fundamental of a friendship is not that you're always going to agree on all possible kind of topics. The, 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 the fundament of a friendship is that you're always going to be able to talk to each other and then to find a good solution and find a compromise. And I believe that's what we have been doing. I mean, don't forget where we're coming from. Don't forget the different crises we, we had to solve and how we find European solutions based on the German-French uh, 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 friendship. So I would say we are definitely in a difficult situation, but I'm not pessimistic. pessimistic. I think that the, the French what's German... The, what's the biggest bridge to gap? Is it over uh, whether or not the EU can take on debt? Is it how to fund the war in Ukraine? Uh, is it uh, uh, whether or not there's a rollback of the Green New Deal? I think the fundamental question is the question of finance. Uh, I think the question of debt and the question of, the question of how we're going to finance all this project is definitely... Um, one of the most crucial topic. But also when you're looking at the sector of energy, I think we need to acknowledge the fact that we have two different approaches when it comes to, to energy in France and, and, and in Germany. And uh, I will go further. If you look at European um, sovereignty, European resilience, and how we're going to achieve that and, and what's the timeline in order to get there, I would also say that we have slightly different approach. We don't, we don't, um, we don't have different uh, point of view when it comes to the objective. But on the way to get there, that would, that's why I would say that we somehow have a different approach. And I think it's fine. So what we're currently doing, what we have been doing um, for, for the last years, also in the German-French uh, Parliamentary Assembly, is to make sure that we talk together, that we discuss the different uh, point of views, and we make sure we come to a compromise. Armin Zorn, so many thanks for taking time out to speak with us from Berlin. Thanks a lot.